India's decade. The decade of technology is here. As one of the world's fastest growing economies, we are ready for a generational shift. A rapidly growing, digitally enabled, skilled workforce is fueling this accelerated growth. Digitization is transforming lives and businesses as we know them. Coming together to drive this deep tech digital skilling revolution with the Government of India and NASCOM is Future Skills Prime. Democratizing learning by offering students and professionals an unparalleled opportunity in skill development with NASCOM certificate to give your career an edge. Government of India incentive program to fund your skilling ambitions customized course plans to craft your learning journey access to nascom exclusive career support in the form of job fairs hackathons internships and skill challenges learner ledger to track your progress competency diagnostics test to evaluate your tech aptitude opportunity to explore new age tech as well as professional skills there is something for everyone within the future skill primes foundational bridge and deep skilling learning programs the Future Skills Prime Learners are taking center stage in emerging tech job roles across industry sectors with 40% women learners working with colleges and universities to integrate tech skills with the National Credit Framework, aligning popular industry courses to National Skills Qualification Framework. Our learners have gained a competitive edge over their peers. Our strong partner network helps learners make the most of their time spent on the course. Our corporate partners go the extra mile to make Future Skills Prime a success. Our government partners bring credibility and authority to the programs offered. Powered by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India and NASCOM, representing the $227 billion technology industry in India with the skilling support ecosystem, we aim to make India the digital talent hub of the world. Let's build the Digital Talent Nation together. Good morning, everybody. We'll just wait for a couple of minutes for full house, and then we shall start. Uh, before that, I wanted to set up the context of this session. So we are today on in this session of generative AI and LLM, and we'll understand more about it from our you know honorable speakers here. Uh, so. I think we already have a full house. We are live on YouTube as well. So what is generative AI and LLM? And you know, what is all this hype about chat GPT? How is it going to influence the future job roles? All of it will be discussed. So this is the agenda of today's session. We will be discussing about a brief introduction of generative AI. What are the use cases? What are the large language models? Introduction of large language models and the use cases and the key issue, what is prompt engineering? It has come uh, into picture after the chat GPT and you know, what is the future? Uh, there is a Q&A as and when we go. Uh, however, there will also be a Q&A towards the end of the session. So if you can hold your questions, it would be nice. But if there is a question about what is being discussed, then we will address it as and when needed. Now, uh, 
this is a disclaimer from MathLogic uh, that generative AI is still uh, in fancy and developing at rapid pace. So, you know, you need to understand that uh, what is the facade and what is the uh, actuals. Uh, so I am here to introduce our speakers. I don't want to take much of your time. And we have Anurag, uh, who is the founder of MathLogic, and Manu, who is co-founder of MathLogic, uh, here to talk about this whole session. And uh, I'll pass it over to them to first introduce themselves to this uh, uh, and uh, then perhaps uh, discuss about the topic. So over to you, Anurag and uh, Manu. Uh, just give me a moment, I'll unshare. So, hi Anurag, hi Manu. I also have my colleague Sangeeta here. So, Sang uh, Sangeeta is also a part of our team. So, I pass it over to you both to take the session forward from here. Anurag, can you unshare your screen? Thank you, Anjana. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I'm Anurag. Uh, I'm the CEO of FN MathLogic Consulting Services. Uh, I've been working in this industry of, you know, what it's called uh, <clears throat> analytics, data science, AI, ML now uh, for last 30 years. Uh, and I'm here today with my uh, colleague and co-founder Manu, uh, who, and together we'll try and demystify this whole Gen AI and LLM and what they can do, what they cannot do. Uh, Manu, you want to go ahead? Uh, yeah. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Manu, and I have almost uh, now plus 20 plus years of experience in predictive analytics, and I'm the chief data scientist for MathLogic. And I will just get started with uh, the generative AI part. So just give me a minute. And please feel free to ask the questions as you see appropriate. Okay, let me know if you can see my screen now. Yes, yeah. we can. Yeah. So I think everyone has knows about chat GPT. Even my 12-year-old kid now knows about the chat GPT. Right? And we have seen a lot of news about chat GPT. Chat GPT passes the US medical licensing exam. Right? As I said, my son now uses, my 15-year-old, the elder son uses his chat GPT for some of his class assignments to demystify some of the concepts. Right, which he can't understand very easily. Uh, it can write essays, it can write solve math problems, right? Pretty neat. Uh, it can even write code, right? We are in this uh, business of uh, artificial intelligence for the last 20 years. Now it is called artificial intelligence predictive analytics. And sometimes what we have seen in the last couple of months, if we have to turn around something pretty fast, Chat GPT can give us a very, very good starting point, amazingly good starting point. Right? So everyone is talking about chat GPT. These are all people they have seen. We have seen some of the good use cases. There are also some of the other stuff, which is also on the other side that people are also now looking at uh, the potential issues with it, right? Um, if you guys are following this uh, about, <coughs> excuse me, about AI, right? There was a lot of, prominent people have come together and say that AI can be some kind of a threat to society and we need to have rules along with it, right? People wrote that we should actually stop working, stop any new algorithm coming into the market for next uh, six months or so. One of the godfathers of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, actually talked about this, that what he says that these models, right, GPT-4 specifically, uh, has an amazing amount of general knowledge. And for a normal human being, it surpasses them by a long way, right? So the amount of knowledge that the chat GPT can have or the GPT can have is amazing. In terms of reasoning, it may not be as good as human being, but it can do very good, simple reasoning. Uh, and at the end, he says, and the given the rate of progress, we expect that things to get better quite fast. So we need to worry about that, right? So everyone is talking about... Uh, uh, Manu, I'm sorry to uh, just interrupt you. A uh, couple of people are saying uh, your voice is a little feeble. So if you can just put the mic a little. Please. Okay. Is it better now? Is it better? No, Manu, I think I have to speak a louder. I can uh -huh. hear you better, but I think some people are having problems. Uh, we can hear you. I am at the full. I think uh, 
should be okay uh, and let me just uh, put the mic closer to my mouth then more okay so right so what are generative models right what is chat gpt these actually belongs to a class of model which is known as generative model if you look at gpt chat gpt actually means chatting through a gpt algorithm gpt actually stands for generative pre trained transformer right what does it actually mean so the keyword is generative models so what are generative models mean right a generative model so the generative ai are a set of algorithms that can generate or create new content like images text audio video based on the data on which they have been trained on so what used to happen earlier we used to feed a data into an algorithm and it will give some answer now what we are seeing an algorithm itself can create data right but end of the day what is images text audio video they are nothing but data so the the algorithm can even generate a data and it can generate the data based on what it has seen earlier right for example chat gpt or the gpts have seen the data on the internet or whatever sources of the text they have been trained on they are actually part of what was defined in 2021 as foundational model or foundation models right this was the term that was defined by stanford uh, ai uh, you know, one of the ai labs that they have and they said a foundation model is any model that is trained on a broad data for example all the text on the net right and it's generally used self supervision but let's not talk about that that can be adapted to a wide range of downstream tasks for example a large model that has been trained like a gpt can be used for conversation can be used for summarization can be used for uh, certain other downstream tasks so that was known as foundational foundation model right so to keep it very simple a generative model a set of models which can generate data earlier models were when you input a data and you get some output here you are actually based on certain simple input it can actually generate data which is pretty pretty interesting right so let's think of and how it can generate is it useful or it is just not very very interesting so i asked chat gpt i asked chat gpt the uh, same simple question what is generative ai and i said okay please just keep it to 50 words and explain to a 5 year old kid right and it says very interesting stuff it says it's a smart computer uh, friend that can make new pictures music and stories on its own it uses a super brain to learn from example come up with his own unique creation it is like having a magical friend who can who can make ama amazing things you have never seen before right in a very simplistic manner he explains what is a generative ai my father who is now 60 years plus old right is now in 70 plus right uh, he asked me what is this chat gpt ones right and i started to answer in a little more technical stuff he said i don't understand that. so i asked the chat gpt the same question what is a generative ai explain it to a 60 year old person right again in 50 words so it says yeah hello yeah man go ahead yeah it's a clever program technology that can create new and original things like artwork music or story without being explicitly told what to do it learns from examples and uses its imagination to create unique and interesting content it's like a creative assistant for humans so if you look at the 5 year old for a 5 year old and a for a 60 year old it can actually take some of the content and create content right different content same question different content based on a little different uh, context whether it's a 5 year old or a 60 year old and it does that in a fairly fairly uh, good manner and if i look at if i ask the same question now please explain to a data scientist yeah so the data scientist right refer, for a data scientist it says it refers to an area of artificial intelligence that focuses on creating models capable of generating new data samples from a resemble a given data set so it becomes a little more 
a nuanced answer, right? It becomes much more nuanced answers. It can learn patterns and structures from the training data to produce original content such as images, text, or even realistic simulations. So that is, if you now think about it, that is a transformational uh, work in my mind, right? You, you are able to generate content based on specific input. And that content is tailored and how it has been able to generate because it has been, able, has been trained on past long, long data, right? And large data sets, huge scale data sets. And it has been able to learn some of the very, you know, those underlying patterns and now being able to take the context and able, have been able to create those answers. Yeah, so right. I think Manu, there's a question whether chat GPT can only deal with text or images. So uh, chat GPT can only right now deal with text. GPT-4 can deal with other type GPT -4 of- GPT-4 can take text and images as an input, but the output is still text. But there are other technologies, other generative AI technologies that can deal with images and videos and so on and so forth. We will we will talk about that. But chat GPT specifically uh, is is for dealing with it's a text uh, only model. There was another question: If GPT four is paid, yes, it is paid. Yeah, <laughs> and also, there's a long waiting. Uh, yeah, even chat GPT three or chat GPT will become paid at some point. I mean, there's a limit. There's a limited fee or a freemium structure. Uh, essentially, we'll talk about that. These chat GPT and other things, they are you know they are proprietary models, meaning. Uh, they are not open source or they're not free. It is, you know, OpenAI or Microsoft that they have decided that today they are free, but that not necessarily be the case tomorrow. Tomorrow, if they want, they can start charging for it. In fact, they're already charging for it under other models. So we'll talk about that briefly saying the proprietary versus, uh, uh, you know, open source. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's something that we'll talk about one of the future trends. Uh, saying right now, it seems like some of these technologies is controlled by few individuals or organizations. Uh, but there are efforts underway to broaden that ownership. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, there are two questions more. Uh, is, uh, you know, uh, is chat GPT helping, uh, can help us creating a website? Can uh, chat GPT help us create a website? And also speech to text feature, is it available? So yeah, actually, I think we'll address that. Let's yeah. wait. Questions. We, you know, we have an entire section on how, what are the typical use cases, what can chat GPT or other generative AI do and cannot do. Uh, I think we'll cover that uh, in details. So let's hold on to some of those questions. Uh, we will cover them. Okay. So let's go ahead. Now, so this generative AI, right, has is not new. It's been going on for a long time, but yes, there's a transformational stuff which has happened now. So just to be very clear, right? We understand AI, right? AI is part, is all ML and deep learning. Generative AI is a very specific use case of deep learning algorithms. Deep learning algorithms are the algorithms which are based on neural networks, right? Which uses the concept of neural networks and uh, they have been used for very specific use cases for image, text, tabular data, and so on and so forth. Right? The generative AI actually started in early foundations, started in early 1950s to 80s, right? Then there were probabilistic models in early 19, uh, in early 2000. The big push started coming when the deep learning became very, very famous. And in 2013 and before that, right, autoencode 2006, 7 autoencoders, and then variational autoencoders, they started coming up which can generate some data. The, the first very promising or very not promising, I will just say very uh, famous algorithm that came was in 2014, which was known as GAN, Generative Adversarial Networks, where you have two networks used together to train a model that can generate some text. So you give some, in, sorry, image, you give some input and it generated some images. So that was the GANs which started, uh, which was, very, very um, interesting in 2014. And that led to a lot of uh, research in the area of image generation. In 2017, there was, in my mind, there was a transformational paper which came 
and that paper was uh, talks about the tra uh, transformer models, right? It was 2017, a Google paper, a Google brain paper, I guess, where they talked about using a transformer network. And this transformer network gave a huge ability to learn from a sequence data in a, in a very short period of time. So you can learn from large amount of data and you can pretty much paralyze that training. And it was started to getting used on text data sets. And that was the transformer model. And pretty much in my mind, and I talked uh, in four years back when I said these transformer block uh, 2018, they will pretty much transform the way we do text work. And it actually did that. And the transformer models became actually the backbone of what we now today call as generative uh, GPT, right? Pre-trained uh, transformer, right? At the end, it says transformer. That actually just happened in 2017. And now from Right now, what we have seen now, we have large language models, right? GPTs are what is known as large language models. You can have text to images and text to videos, uh, which, which are now getting leveraged a lot. And now we can have these models where uh, you can input a text, it will create an image. You will input a text, it will create a video, right? And we'll show some of those things and you have input for model to input a text to generate some of the text or do some so it's pretty pretty interesting just to give some perspective right um, not to just just to give some perspective that's going on for a while now but we have reached a place where it becomes interesting for a lot of folks like us and you want to go ahead with this sure so let me talk about you know not just chat gpt or lm saying what are the generative ai use cases right now broadly you know Depending upon the type of output, we can classify saying they are the language models, so which are the LLMs. Uh, they are models or uh, technologies, I will say algorithm that deal with images or videos. And then there's things which deal with audio. And of course, there's some intersection. For example, we can do uh, text to audio, right? So that's an intersection of language and uh, audio models, or we can do audio to text, uh, 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 similarly, so on and uh, so forth. Now, from a business perspective, and that's where, you know, the NASCOM we are focused on, obviously, you know, the most, I mean, most of the use cases will be for language and we'll deal with that separately uh, for language models, right? Uh, and, but I am saying generative AI is broader than just LLMs or language models. So chat GPT is one example of LLM. There are several other LLMs, right? There's BART, there is uh, character.ai, there's a lot of different models. So, uh, and again, the disclaimer is that, you know, we are going to be showing certain uh, examples or models or things, but we are not endorsing uh, any of those products or services, right? Those are just shown as example of what is available today uh, to people. Um, this session is to, you know, make you familiar, right? So let me just see, give you an example saying language, we will do images or videos, right? And I'm going to take you to, uh, okay, sorry, I can't. I will do that under, so. Okay. Uh, yeah. you know, so what I'm going to show is, you know, there are several uh, uh, of these, uh, you know, platforms that uh, do this, but, uh, you know, so common amongst them are, you might have heard of Mid Journey. There's something called Deep Floyd If. There's, uh, uh, there's also proprietary products in this case, like Adobe released a product called Firefly. And all of them, what they do is uh, they allow you to create images and even videos from text. So Manu, if you can click, I think the... What showing uh, is still your? Uh, yeah, I think it's just doing that under. Uh, if you can just share, if it is open for you, I'll just stop the sharing. It's taking time for me to uh, put, go to the sign in. I'll just stop it if you can show it under. Hello. Hello. Yeah, under. I'm going to stop it if you can just share your screen. Okay, so what I will show you is, you know, there's a, you know, there are a lot of tools like this, and there's no way to say that uh, Mid Journey, uh, you know, there's a uh, called Mid Journey dashboard, and uh, so let me. Uh, Anurag, you will have to share your screen. Yeah, I, I am just sharing. Sorry. Okay. So right now, okay. So this is just to show what kind of capability already exists uh, in today. And this is not an open source. 
so this is a platform called midjourney and there are several others okay right now it seems to be uh api seems to be down right api is down so i can't see the uh, okay let me just see okay so right now it's not working i thought i'll show it live maybe that was a mistake so it can generate very very realistic uh, uh, images and there are several uh, other tools it's not just uh, mid journey uh, maybe we'll come back to it uh, after uh, yeah sometimes so it just doesn't seem to be working there is uh, other uh, let me see so there are other uh, technologies uh, which will allow you to for example they you can take it will take a prompt text prompt and convert it into an image okay and some of the work that they do for example you can enter your prompt so let's say i can um, enter my uh, uh, prompt let's say uh, i can just say uh, an elephant passing by taj right and i can say generate and what it's going to do is based on this prompt and this just to show you some of the capabilities it's going to generate images and it's pretty fascinating right how just by this it can generate images so for example it has generated these images so i just gave that prompt elephant passing by taj mahal and i can make it very detailed i can say passing by you know so it's going to create uh, it's creating these uh, images i can uh, you know scale them up there are other uh, things that it's going to so whatever i choose it will first generate smaller ones then it can generate a bigger uh, piece uh, from it and as you can see it's generating you know all the input that i have given is is an elephant passing by taj mahal uh, or you could try and give it any other uh, link and it has been able to generate uh, the text now you can imagine what are the possibilities of this right it will make the content generation including image and videos very very easy if you can imagine it if you can think about it uh it's uh, it you know uh, ai can just uh, produce that so it can have so many so many different uh, applications uh, that are uh, going to be uh, there you can also put some negative prompts so if there is something that you don't want a feature you can say you know don't include it uh, and it will uh, go away so let's just come back to mid journey and see if we can show you the showcase uh, right now it becomes available so again okay it's not to be uh, and sometimes it takes a while to for it to get uh, yeah to generate the stuff because there will be lot of loads and there's a lot of queue so right now this is a free product that we are you know sort of talking about so we can switch back to uh, uh, the ppt so basically there is text there is video we're going to talk all uh, uh, so we talk about text a lot uh, so we were here and then there's audio right so we will uh, there are a lot of examples there is very very easy there earlier used to be services right text to audio now with all of these generative models they become much much more uh, accessible and easier right and for languages we're going to show you some more use cases and then we will uh, sort of discuss right so now what are large language models right so this chat gpt so we understand chat but chat gpt is just one of the models there's also bard which is by google there is character dot uh, ai there is uh, you know uh, this uh, chat gpt uh, kind of a clone uh, integrated in bing search engine so the thing is that they can these are generational models they are foundational models they can be trained on multiple tasks to understand them better right uh, is it's very very simple you know the it's a, in a very basic form if you remember you know if you go to google search and you start typing it tries to show you the next word right? so that is the for example if you type how are you how are you doing and then it can predict the next word for example based on saying for example it could be today how are you doing today based on how is it predicted that again saying basis of all of this text that it has learned it thinks that this is the next word uh, that is in high uh, probability so these llms are basically these they are just sequence predictors saying if i give some sequence of words it will predict what is the next word now what makes it interesting if for llms is that they cannot just predict the next word they can predict the next sentence 
they can predict the next paragraph they can predict the next page they can predict the entire article right so think about it it is the same thing saying can i predict what comes next and then if i am very very good at it i can predict not just the next word next sentence you know paragraph line i can write the entire article and that is what uh, these llms have become very very powerful because they can do a lot of things that earlier you know were earlier not possible i can give them instructions for instruct gpt right so it's giving amazing context and it can also do in context so the thing is sometimes there's a q and a chatbot right i ask a question i'll get an answer so one is if i ask the same question again in the earlier models i'll get the same answer back or very similar answer uh, back again but in here what is called in context training i can say for example we showed you the example saying what is generative ai and i said you know explain to a 5 year old then that is the in context training saying given the context that i have to talk to a 5 year old i will give a different answer and now imagine what kind of customization can this technology enable you to do right uh, it can enable mass customization depending upon who i am talking to what is the context the answer can change just like a human being so it's like a you know it's like a human being or a, or somebody who's know it all right a, a very smart person uh, this technology can mimic that and that's what these large language models are they are essentially neural networks uh, they are just doing sequence prediction but with the amount of training and the depths that uh, they go in i guess anurag we lost you okay i uh, can i can hear anurag okay sorry uh, i will repeat so so basically these large language models uh, have become so good that just this thing of predict you know predicting the next word can be extended and they can write the whole essay they can write uh, a whole blog they can write the whole code of what comes next uh, with these uh, models and let's uh, show you some of these examples of what are the there are a lot of business use cases that are there we have picked up a few that we want to share today uh, and give you some more context so we think this technology right and i am not talking about just chat gpt because chat gpt is an example of an llm right so what are the business cases of llm llm could be you could use chat gpt you could use bard you could use character.ai or technically you can even come up with your own model and i'll discuss that that is the future where you know business cases will be that yes build an llm but train it on my data because i want this llm or this bot or chatbot to be able to understand some of this my policies my my business uh, uh, context and answer according to that right so what can happen you know how can it revolutionize education and learning right and we'll give you an uh, we'll show you an example let me just first show the example and then you know uh, so if i just click on this this is an example that we have done so for example uh, we can ask it to explain certain things so for example here this is a mathematical concept i asked saying uh, you know a complex mathematical uh, question saying do binomial expansion of 1 upon 1 of x up to 4 times so you can see in the answer it not only gives the answer it also can explain why it is there's lot it's all and all in language that a human being can understand so it says the binomial expansion of this 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 it this it it's like you know it has remembered the textbook and it is reproducing from there but you know i would caution you it is not reproducing it is a generative model so it has learned and it has you know saying this is the probability that after this in this this term this comes and all of these comes it's a model it is not yet doing so you can see this is it can do so what it can do is it can do you know imagine like if you you know if you have a kid or you want to learn you get a personalized instructor and you can tell that saying you know if you don't understand you can say okay i didn't understand and it will try and explain it in another manner so any kind of you know education and training this technology can potentially revolutionize it it can do you know ultra customization meaning to so think about it saying let's say you have you are studying physics uh, or you are studying you know and you can have somebody like einstein i explain to you like einstein or somebody else right or if you want you can have 
uh, I don't know, uh, whoever you like, you know, your kid likes, you know, uh, uh, Leonardo uh, uh, da Vinci explain it to you, or you can have, I don't know, Shah Rukh Khan explain it to you. So you can customize the education and training to, uh, you know, very, very high degree, right? The context can be same. So one is, this is the context. It has all the knowledge. It can, you can also choose the style in which you are taught. taught. So one of the things uh, I think this will revolutionize is the way we do our education, the way the trainings are happening in schools, in corporates, uh, in a lot of uh, different places where, because now these trainings can be hyper-personalized. It's like you can get the best of the tutor only for yourself and customize to your way of learning and your uh, you know, style of learning. If you don't understand, and it will be infinitely patient. You can keep asking it again and again to explain, it will explain. Unlike a human being, it will not get irritated. So it has some good points. I mean, obviously there are some uh, other limitations as well, but it can really revolutionize the way we do our trainings and uh, uh, yeah, Anurag, uh, just to add there, uh, Khan Academy has already created a personalized tutor using ChatGPT on their platform. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. There will be so many examples. What I'm saying is, you know, yes, uh, Khan Academy is doing it. There'll be other people. Even you could do it, right? It opens up so many opportunities uh, that uh, for companies to do this hyper-personalization. Uh, exactly. So there will, will be, you know, it will just revolutionize, uh, you know, so you can take LLMs, you can take chat, chat GPT, or you can have your own LLMs, you can have your own content and all of that. Right? So that's one example, very, very clear example, where uh, LLMs, we're going to revolutionize this. Right? The second one I would say is, or another one where it's, it's like the content, creation, generation, summarization, all of that. So you could use it to write content. It can be used to write emails, to generate responses, to generate PPTs, to do a lot of things, to write blogs. And how will it do that? Uh, if I go back, right, that's the second question. Saying we can just write, tell it, write a travel blog, uh, blog on my recent trip to Sikkim in hundred words, right? So I said hundred words because so that you know it will fit in in one screen. But it can write stuff for three or four pages. Again. You can also give a lot of instructions. You can say, okay, I went to Sikkim and I went to this place and that place and I enjoyed this and I went by with my friends. It can build all of that in the context. Right? So just by saying, just write a blog on my travel to Sikkim, it can say, uh, it can write a nice blog saying, I went here, I did this, I did this. So how does it do that? Because it has read a lot of blogs and now based on that, it's just saying, what is a typical experience going to Sikkim like? With prompt engineering, what you can do is you can customize this thing. Okay, yes, I went there. I went there in so-and-so weather uh, or in so-and-so month so that it can say at yeah, that time it was uh, you know snowing or it was hot or uh, you know otherwise. So imagine what it can do, right? It can write content for you. I know a lot of people who use it to write their emails or to at least uh, kind of uh, you know uh, run that email through it to make it better. And I know some very, very learned people who are doing this because uh, you know, it adds value. Okay. We're going to see again, a lot of this content creation getting embedded in the tools that you use. For example, uh, Microsoft, you know, we, a lot of us use Microsoft tools and technologies like Word, PowerPoint, Excel. They're going to embed these LLMs inside those and it's coming, right? It's already, you know, some pre-beta launches, some going on with some 600 customers worldwide and it's going to be getting launched in next quarter and could revolutionize. So when you want to have to write a report, you will just do very, very simple. You'll just say, write a report about this and it will give you a starting point. And then you can go and change it the way you like. So it's going to reduce the time of, you know, writing, typing out, uh, adding the certain details. If you give it enough context, it will prepare very, very relevant summary. So for example, you could go into Teams and let's say you arrive late, it can give you a summary of whatever discussions has happened in that meeting. It can prepare notes. Uh, uh, in Excel, it can do some analysis on its own. You can ask it questions in natural language and it will do it. Right now, I'll, I'll, I'll try to see if you can play a, you know, a video of that. But again, the content, it can generate content. It can summarize. You can say, you know, I have given this, uh, this whole uh, bunch of tests. Can you summarize it in five, uh, 10 words or, or uh, you know, five lines or two paragraphs? It will do that. It can give you a gist of long, right? 
So for example, imagine right, maybe you may have thousands of let's say customer comments, and nobody has to, time to go through individually one by one. You can ask uh, Chat GPT or LLM to summarize all of that for you. Right. So that's another very very pertinent use case of you know content generation summarization that will happen. And again, it can have so many business applications. And I'm sure you know it has triggered a lot of things in your mind. Uh, you can do that. There were earlier some questions about language translation. Uh, because language translation is again just text to text, right? It's a transformation of one text. It's a, it's a very, very natural thing that these transformer models can uh, can do. And you might have already seen that some of these language translation, whether you use Google Translate or some of the other services of Microsoft or AWS, they can translate the languages very, very well. And right. So, for example, and you know, here I will say translate. How are you in Hindi, Sanskrit, uh, Sanskrit? French, Tamil, Kannada, Urdu. It can do a lot of different languages, including Indian regional languages are already built in. Again, we will come to the limitations. Some of it may not be 100% correct, and that's the, we'll come back to limitations, but it has shown amazing ability to do these things. Single model. So people were really looking at earlier, you could do this, you need to have a you needed to have a separate model that can only do translation. But now you have a more generic model that can do translation, that can do summarization, that can do so many other things. You don't need to have a separate separate application model to do all of these different things. Right? And here it will add a disclaimer also. So it can do multiple languages. Right? Uh, let me just go through this and I'll take uh, some of the questions. Language translation. Code generation in business terms, right? And there were a lot of questions about code. It does not write correct code. We'll come back to it. But yes, so code generation. For example, we just said PSI calculations for continuous and categorical variables and write it in Python. I can write it in Python. I could use it to convert code from Python to some other language, Java or whatever. So not only it write codes, it also gives a very nice explanation. So for example, to this question, PSI calculation. So it, first, it understood what is PSI. I did not tell it saying this PSI means uh, population stability index. So it can understand from context and what I'm asking for. In some other context, it would have understood PSI means something else. So it says to this, you can use following approaches. First, it says to do this. First, it is writing in English saying, what do you need to do? So you need to create uh, two data sets. You need to divide by into bins. Then you need to do this, etc. And then it says. Okay, and here is the code. And we have tried this code, then this code, it works. It also gives you a nice option to saying copy it. So you can simply copy it and paste it wherever you want. You can see, right? I did not tell it saying what is the value. It has assumed the, you know, the name of the variables. It knows the library to be used. It knows some of these things that are there and it has done this calculation and said, this is the score. So even if I did not know Python, even if I knew Python, it can give it to me, you know, just typing all of this stuff for a programmer, let's say he knows everything. He may make, uh, you know, syntax mistakes, some of the other things that typing itself may take five minutes, 10 minutes. Now here I'm able to get the actual code with explanation in two minutes or, or, or you know, 10 seconds. Right? Not only that, then it can mix this content, this with code, then, okay, in this example, it says this is what, this is what it is. So it is assume certain things that exist and then telling you then you need to put it. Then it says, okay, continuous PSI calculation for categorical variables. So first I said continuous variables. So people who do modeling thing and it has given that code. Okay. So what it can do, it can write codes. Of course, are there limitations? Of course. Uh, uh, we will talk about the limitations separately because, you know, and absolutely it can get very heated because sometimes the code works, sometimes the code does not work. So, yeah, you know, you have to see, uh, see that this is not a code generator alone, right? It is a generic model that can do a lot of things. One of the things it can also do is write codes. What if you were to train an LLM specifically only on code writing and forget about other skills? Now, arguably that can be much more, uh, much, much better at writing codes. And that is what's going to happen. Even what you see today is much better than what was launched three months ago. Every day, this model, the underlying model here in chat GPT or any of the other things, they are getting updated on a daily basis. 
what the capability is astonishing but it is also improving at a you know at a daily daily level or even you know within the day you will see so same same question if you ask today and ask tomorrow you might get a, diff a different response and a, you know usually a much more intelligent response okay so let me stop there are two other things i'll come to those but let me stop here and see if there are any uh, there are a lot of questions anurag yeah, i no, want I to know. say the q and a is like full and uh, a lot of repetitive questions again but uh, some questions are on the line of whether the data which is provided by chat gpt is authentic politically legally you know what is the what yeah. is the yeah, data again, so, yeah. so let me yeah and just address that question we'll address that in limitation as well uh so it is a generative model right and there is no claim on accuracy so nobody who is using uh, use lm to generate can be 100% sure that this is accurate it will never be 100% sure it will never be accurate because this is generation right new content nobody can guarantee that new content is going to be accurate but of course the better the model so you still have to test it meaning it will generate the content it is at best a helper as of now it will generate the content but you still need to see it right the problem but what i can tell you is that the accuracy of those things is improving so earlier let's say it was only accurate 50% of the time so today that level would have gone up to 60 70% and for certain task it will be 95 99% accurate so now it's up to the use case or you to decide at what level can you start trusting this output or at what level will this be helpful so no these are not accurate these are not meant to be accurate right these are generative models uh, their main focus is not their main focus is to generate content so as my wife tells these are these are pretend no no it all right so if you ask something actually llm will answer it something even if it knows or not so if you ask something to which is impossible it may still give you an answer so now how do i know it is reliable or not reliable again you have to test for some use cases some of that 80% uh, accurate answer is good enough for some other use cases no you need 99% or 95% then you will you know so there there different use cases but you have to remember this is a generative model it is generating content that has that does not exist early so there is no guarantee there can be no guarantee that it will be accurate however you will find in many use cases if it's a routine thing you know old thing mature thing the answer will be 99 or uh, uh, percent accurate or even higher accuracy however on new things things which are evolving you know answer may not be correct so even in coding right if i ask a question about a library which is only been existing for last last you know it's only been written last three months it may not be able to give me a very accurate answer i have seen cases where you ask to write it a code it gives very confidently a code but that code does not work and sometimes when you go back and see sometimes the library itself does not exist or if the library exists that the method does not exist so 100% reliable no you will no, never get 100% reliability with any because these are probabilistic models you will never get 100% reliable but it can come to a point where you will say it's good enough right it's going to be wrong once in a million i am going to take it the other way would be to say okay yes it is going to give me a starting point beyond that i may need to tweak it tweak that output to get to what we want and that's a challenge if we were to do if it was doing 100% accurate then there's nothing for us to do right uh, yeah it's a solved problem so at least today and again i may be proven wrong after some time at least today you cannot rely on it the accuracy you know there are certain scores that people calculate what is called you know truthfulness score or something people have new measures are being defined to say okay what is the reliability of this and i'll show you some of those measures later on there are models uh, some of these best models or the open source models put that reliability or you know the truthfulness at about 50 60% chat gpt's proprietary models it's not benchmark there maybe it's 70 80% again depends on use case depends on the context what is the question you are asking if you ask a simple question the chances are very very high 99% or more that it will give you a truthful answer if you ask a more complex question it may give you the general idea but the code for example it gives you may not be 100% correct 
so i don't know whether that answers but that is the reality yeah i think that- i think that answers a lot of questions there in fact a lot of them are answered by your this answer and there is uh, there is one question that uh, is asked uh, since you said you know these are uh, trained model and so there is uh, some people are saying ki is it searching so it's not searching it is no. predicting uh, so uh, since it is predicting there is a question how is it getting a way, accurate data which is happening now so for example you asked something like what is the population of this country right now so then what is it doing is it searching yeah okay that's a good question so what we are seeing now are not pure llm for example chat gpt is not pure llm where it is just predicting the next output for example it can do a lot of these mathematical calculations now that cannot happen right by predicting what the uh, what number will come next so what you are seeing today and again you're going to see more and more it will not be just pure play llm what you will see is multiple systems in play for example chat gpt today is not just a pure llm it has other systems to support see the core of llm is to understand the user intent so you asked a question it understood the user intent now having understood the user intent for example it understood that user wants me to do this calculation it need not use it can use a calculator now right so what you are seeing the output of chat gpt for example is not a pure play llm which can say which is just predicting the next word by word so in certain cases you know the fulfillment can be done by other technologies that are already known so for example i know if i am asking it to do 4 plus 5 right it is a simple mathematical calculation so if it has un- so if all it has to do it has to understand saying i am asking you to do this operation and then it has to know saying to do this operation what is the right technology or the tool to use then it can use that tool to fulfill that request and give me the answer in english okay so what we are seeing here are much more complex systems than just saying this is an llm which is predicting the next word that is the base of it that helps you understand the context in what is the user saying what is the intent of the user and then now fulfilling that intent saying okay user wanted me to do certain thing uh, you know to do this thing you know the best thing is not to just predict but to actually use the calculator so if it is asking saying why is the square root of 27 you know how the hell would a you know llm know what is the square root of 27 or what comes or any number but it knows you are asking me to do a mathematical calculation it understands what is that mathematical con- calculation and then it will use a mathematical calculator so it's not a pure play llm these systems will be complex systems they will use and that is how it will evolve you will have llm at the heart of it what is the role of llm llm's role is to understand what is the user saying in normal english and then it will decide yes user is saying this i should be saying this and now you know i need some calculation so i need to go to this other tool do the calculation and return the results right so 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 anurag i think your answer to this also kind of answers what is chat gpt is it a chat or so basically it is an integration like you said of multiple it other is, things yeah, absolutely it is and it is not the same thing that it was when it was launched in november so for example when it was launched in november it could not do 2 plus 2 because that was a mathematical question it was not trained to do or you know 2 plus 2 i meant is any mathematical you know any complex mathematical calculation but today if you give it let me show you right it can do very complex mathematical let's say i'll complex so it can do you know any additions uh let's say i'll say can you add uh, one point some large number plus uh something uh some large number right now you can say arguably how can you train a language not right but it says it says it can do it and it has done it And do we check the correctness of this? <laughs> check the correctness, and it will be correct. And I can tell you, it will be correct because it's a simple question, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but if you were doing this six months ago, it may not have been correct. But today, it is correct, and you can try it. It will be correct. There is a question of what is the source of current affairs for this. gpt chat gpt or you know depends on yeah so again the... so source of current affairs uh, in fact lot of times you when you ask a current affairs question it may decline to answer 
So uh, I don't know uh, uh, who is the. Uh, it can answer some of the basic questions, but if you ask current, so what you will see is, you know, is not the pure LLM output. Let me ask. Uh, let me show you different things. Saying what do they do with Chat GPT, right? Um, what I let me ask a malicious question. What are some of the dark web? Uh, I think it denies. I have also. Yeah, it, it, it will deny. Like, why, why does <laughs> yeah. it deny? Right? So it will say, I am sorry, but I cannot assist with that request. No, no. but uh, if you ask the same question, Anurag, like, which are the websites you should be careful of or something, something, I guess. It no, no, again, different. so that was true one month ago. It is no longer true. And that is what I'm telling. These are adaptive systems. So there was a, you know, there are a lot of WhatsApp forward saying, if you ask it this way, if you ask the opposite of that, it will tell you the answer. Yes, that was true at that point in time. Today, if you ask, it will not, it has, it has become smart enough. It will say, I will not do this. Now, what is this? And this is also saying why, what you need to do with LLMs. So this, you know, this is not the first LLM answer. I can guarantee you that because if you ask this question, LLM will be inclined to saying, oh, uh, these are the websites that it right knows that. What chat GPT has and many of the system has is a moat around it. So they, what they do is they have another model running on top of the output of the LLM of the base LLM which decides whether the LLM output is, for example, dangerous or they have certain parameters saying, is it giving wrong information? Is it violence? Is it, does it have racism and all of that? And if it is, it, you know, it matches that criteria, it will refuse to answer and replace that answer with something like this. So, for example, it, if you ask how to commit, let's say, uh, suicide, it will not answer that question. So, again, see in here, it is saying uh, the content may violate our policy, etc. So what it is, they are building. See, because this what happened in past, people released. This is not the first time chatbots have been released like this. People released chatbot. There have been disastrous attempts. Facebook made that, and within two days or three days, Microsoft made that earlier. They had to retract it. Why? Because you can do things like this. You can do ask it to do dangerous things. You can ask it to do illegal things. What they have is they are putting a moat around it so that it does not do that. But this is not LLM alone. There is a model on top of LLM. In fact, there's a lot of you know, uh, criticism of chat GPT saying this model. So how do you think this model is believed? Basically, you have to have use cases that, which are you know violence, which are you know uh, 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 content which is classified as racist, this is that, you know, thing which can harm. And there's another model that says, if such is the content, please do not answer. So it is not a single model. This, yes, at the core heart, there is LLM, but then you, in order for it to be useful, you have to put it, put so many balance and checks and balances so that it does not give you the wrong answer. So again, if you were to train your own model, again, it will have so many things. You'll have to put so many checks and balances. So what makes chat GPT so much useful is that they have also put a lot of these checks and balances and there is a continuous feedback. So if you ask a question today and give you a wrong answer, or it has low probability. There is a team which is reviewing this and they will make changes to the model so that uh, it does not give you the wrong answer in future. Anurag, there's one more question that uh, some people have asked. Why is the data of chat GPT or majority of these LLMs not uh, limited to 2021. Yeah, because it takes huge amount of resources to train this, right? Probably chat GPT would have been trained for months. Okay, so uh, the so they have to take data, clean up the data, prepare the data, and then train these models. And they don't train for hours. They do train for days and months. And then you have to uh, modify all of those. So during the training process, whenever they would have trained, they would have restricted. So the, the bulk data. of the training has happened. After that, what is happening is they are doing incremental training. For example, you'll see, right? It says free research preview. So first of all, it's telling you it's proprietary model. You're only doing a free research preview. They can revoke this at any time. They're also giving this you know, chat GPT may produce incor incorrect information about people, places, or facts. And they're also giving a version, chat right. GPT A24 version, right? If you click on this, it will tell you saying uh, release notes. So you will see that literally every 10 days, there's a new version. So 24th, 12th May, 
and every time they do make some changes they are training with additional data but the bulk of the training has happened like till 2021 and that's why most of them will say i have trained on data till 2021 it does not mean it does not have any data it means it has limited data after that period because it can answer questions about 2022 also and 20, things that i have in 2023 also it's just that it is not sure because it has not been trained enough on the more recent data and that is why they are putting a disclaimer saying it only knows till there of course you will see that it may say that disclaimer but it will still answer questions about 2022 or 2023 so it's not that it does not know right so for example you can uh, okay so let me go back saying uh for example i can ask the current affairs question right somebody was asking that so let's see what it says who is the prime minister of india in 2023 let's see this is a current affairs question so in this case they have put a mode saying i will not answer this right so somebody is asking current affairs it will uh, not answer so let's try to ask a historical question so who was the prime minister of india in uh, let us say i'll say 1980 and let's see if it can answer that question correct so yes it is able to answer because it has been trained in that it who was the prime minister of india in 1980 was indira gandhi she served as minister on this it will also give you some additional information so let's say we ask an impossible question who was the prime minister of india in uh, let's say 1940 before our independence so now you can see what is the problem right it says prime minister of india 1940 was jawahar lal nehru so and it knows that right but there is no reasoning so it's a wrong answer and it knows that he went from this thing but the first thing it says the prime minister of india in 1940 was jawahar lal nehru which is not correct so you can see this is not built for accuracy it's giving you an answer right somebody says ha ah, this is the answer or this was the answer it has all of this information but there's no reasoning why did it put the first line because that was the most you know probable line that it thought is the right answer so it said that and and then it is adding saying however it is not there it is not there right so you have to see there are these are limitations it is not meant for current affairs right it is not meant for getting accurate information it is it can answer those questions which do not have one right answer very very well you know if you ask it to verbalize something it can do it very very well as an llm now so accuracy is a problem most business cases require accuracy so what happens now there you add on other systems that can make it accurate right so if it's a mathematical question you say okay a mathematical question i know there are different systems who can do calculate and give it to you right there are attempts now to merge llms with search engines so search engine is different technology llms of different technology now can you create something which is a composite of two and that can be made many much much more use in fact that is one of the things that people are you know microsoft is trying saying in bing it is you know trying to merge bing with uh, this open ai or or llm for chat gpt google is also trying the same so the day that happens it will become much much more powerful right uh, one of the other problems we will see in chat gpt is it cannot give reference because it is creating these words so this this sentence exactly as it is may not exist somewhere this is a creation pure play creation of the language llm model this uh, uh, has created maybe you know some words like this will be there in several places but exactly this phrase may not be there or some of this phrase may not be it is just picked up okay so i hope that answers some of the question saying current affairs no no this is not that is not the right use case for chat gpt what are the right use case for chat gpt is what we are trying to show these are the right business case of course in the hype people may want to use it for very different things but that does not mean that it will be uh, 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 good at doing those things or accurate at doing those things but you can always integrate other systems to 
you know, in those scenarios where it is not very good, right? You can add on those other systems. And that is what future is going to be that you will take LLM, LLM will become at the back end, and you will add a lot of other systems on top to overcome some of the issues that it has. What is the strength of LLM? LLM can interact with users in a very, very natural fashion. Users can say what they want, tell it in natural language, and it can figure out the intent. And then the question becomes saying, how do I best fulfill the intent? There are so many ways to fulfill that intent. But it can do a very good job of understanding what is the user wanting to know. And it can also formulate its own response, but there are limitations. So you may want to, there are, you know, so chat GPT is not one model, there's several models running, which overlay other things to make this response more accurate. But of course, you will see, you will see problems like this. It did not say there was no prime minister in 1940 because it's not actually doing reasoning. What we are seeing right now, it's the beginning of reasoning. It has a lot of information and it almost seems like it is can reason, but we know it's not because it's a probabilistic model. It's not reasoning. Over time, there could be other improvements. It will start to reason. So even Jeffrey Hinton said that it is, you know, in terms of information, it has information, more information than an average person. But in terms of reasoning, it is still at the very, very beginning, nascent state of reasoning. Once that starts to improve, you know, the again, the use cases can be just mind boggling. Right. So current affairs, very recent, it will refuse to answer. The data on which it has been trained, it can answer with confidence and hence it will answer. But very old data also. It is now confused saying, do I know the answer or not know the answer correctly? Uh, you know, some of those models are also not perfect. So it did not say there's nobody. It said Jawaharlal Nehru, but it also said there are other things, you know, please make up your mind. Right? You can also ask it to qualify. You, you know, let me ask the same question again. Let me show you the power of these things. So let's see. So what it is, what is it? It not only, you know, it has the power to correct itself. So I asked it again, it understands if some person is asking it again, there might be something wrong. So it has changed its response. I apologize for the incorrect information in my previous response. And now you can see the power. And now it is giving the correct response because it gave this and then it analyzed this and said, you know, if this is the case, then this could not be true. So it figured it out and it says it is this. He was not, in fact, India did not have prime minister during that time, etc. blah, blah, blah. So you can see that, you know, and sometimes you can say, oh, it made wrong response. But you can see if you ask it again and again, you know, because it is probabilistic, you might hit the right answer. So at first, if you don't go, and this is what is called, you can say even you know, kind of a, you know, prompt engineering where, you do not get the right answer first, but you can ask it again and it will give you the right answer. And that is what I said. You know, some people say, you know, there's some WhatsApp forward saying, you know, it happened this. And then if you ask it the other way, it will give you the right answer. Yes, maybe. But I'm saying that was true of that. They are constantly training. This is May 24th version, right? So 15 days old. And you can be sure in another 15 days, there'll be a new version of this. And if there are any problems, people highlight anything, they can go and correct it. And that is why the model decides with them. They can put an overlay. There were questions that it was answering wrong earlier. Now, if you ask the same question, it will say, I don't know, or I will not tell you, or as a model, I'm not supposed to answer this. Right? And that is what you need to understand, saying this is at the heart is LLM, but there are other things at play. It is not just a pure play LLM, uh, especially this chat GPT. You know, there are others which will be pure, pure play LLM, and there some of these mistakes will be much more obvious. They are not going to apologize and say whatever uh, normally. Okay. Uh, does that answer most of the questions? Anything? Yeah, but uh, there are a lot of questions about how will they replace jobs and which other jobs, you know, that people are worried about and how it is going to change the computer science engineers future okay. and is coding going sure. to okay. be? Okay. Can we hold on to some of that? With, you know, yeah, yeah, sure. The section, the entire section on, you know, future, what future holds and what it will do. But I'm saying, yes, it See, it's going to change the way things are, right? So, yes, it's going to change, reduce some of the current jobs, but it can also lead to a lot of new jobs. Uh, and I'll come to that, right? 
So there are two other things that I want to talk about: customer experience and domain specific. You know, so these are some of the you know use cases. Then you know it has potential to completely change the customer. You know, so of course, customer chatbots have been around for a while, but they can become so much better. And you can truly have a probably a hands-free experience. I mean, even today with chatbots, you have to click here, there. It will give you some options. You have to choose one of them and all of that. That all can go away. It can develop a lot of uh, context. It can also potentially change the way we interact with software. And I will probably show a video. So, uh, and you know, this will take a while. This will mean a lot of customization, but. Potentially today, how we interact with software, right? Typically, there are forms, there are menus, there are complex menus, there are menus, then there's a second level of menu, then third level menu. So you need some time to master the software. But imagine tomorrow you could just tell the software what you want to do. So if you are, let's say, using uh, uh, let's say image editing software, today you know the people who are expert, they know, right? They go to this menu, that menu here, drag it here, etc. Do all this. Maybe you can tell tomorrow saying, you know, make this dog in this picture a little bit bigger. Or you know something that light, or change the color of this dog. So it can change the way you interact with software. Uh, it will take a lot of customization. It is not a simple you know chatbot anymore because it's about fulfillment. So chatbot will help you understand what the customer wants to do. Now how you do that in your product or software or service is up to you, and that is a customization that it can enable. But there's a lot of hard work to get that done. So customer experience, the CX. You can completely change right now. Screen design is so important, etc. Tomorrow, you know, the screen designing will have to be can be very very different because you are no longer interacting with it through you know screen. You're interacting by typing or you know saying something. Uh, so that's a huge huge area that will take time and to develop, but it will come up. So I'm saying there are these new things that will come up. Right? People are worried about jobs. Think about what are the new things that are going to come up. Hyper personalization, right? As I said, every student can get its own personal uh, AI, right? But somebody, some work needs to be done to take this generic model and then customize it uh, to a certain. So there will be a lot more new jobs uh, that will there. Coding, yes, it will increase the efficiency of coding. So probably, if you need ten people today, you will only need five people. So does that mean there's a loss of five jobs? Uh, I would say yes and no. Immediately, yes. If you don't do anything else. There's a loss of five jobs, but I mean, today if you see right, all companies saying I don't have enough resources, etc. So what you know, it is doubling your efficiency. So the, another way to look at it is saying with the same number of people now I can do double double the job. I can do double the turnover. Right. So there's so much upside potential that can open up as well. Right. Essentially, what it is doing is it is saying I can take out some of the mundane things that you do, uh, or even creative things that you do, and I can do that much faster. So it's an efficiency gain. Now, any technology which comes in, right? Typically, we are, you know, every business wants to have efficiency gain, right? They want to do more, uh, more and more and more, right? So efficiency gain will come. Efficiency gain typically when happens, you know, industry will adopt and start doing more work. Uh, yes, there may be certain job losses in certain industries, especially for people who do not adopt, but they should get compensated over time with the new jobs, new things that will come up. Same companies, you know, nowadays I can do five projects. Because that's my capacity. Now with Chat GPT backend, maybe I can do ten projects, twelve projects, twenty projects. Similarly, the cost of building an awesome new software has gone down, right? Now I would want to build two more softwares. So today, let's say it takes six months, one year to build a software, and sort of that kills many use cases. Tomorrow, if it takes one month, you know I'll have so many more people who want to build the software. So there will be more work. See. Because this is imagine just like the price comes down, price comes down, the demand will go up, right? So if the price of coding or preparing software goes down, there will be more demand. We will find other ways to fulfill that. Right? There will be other use cases that we have not covered, which will be, uh, you know, I'll, I'm calling them under domain specific because there can be so many things in specific domains. What you can do, for example, one of the domains that I want to touch upon is healthcare. You can do so many things in healthcare. People are already trying to see if this can help in, let's say, for example, new drug research, new molecule, trying to find out new protein molecules, etc., based on earlier things, new material. Uh, uh, people are talking about, you know, generating medical advice or as an assistant to doctor, right? So all your, so when you go to the doctor, 
you don't need you know you fill in your medical history first blah 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 it can summarize that and present it to the doctor it can also give you you know uh, uh, quote and quote uh, some advice uh, etc it can make uh, 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 routine for you he health plan for you. you can tell it you know what do i want to do if i want to do it can make diet plans for you you know it can do so many things uh, in uh, personalization so any industry where you want to do personalization there's going to be lots and lots of scope Okay, uh, I think mindful of time, let me move forward uh, and then we can take the questions later on. So I think we've already discussed some of these things. So what are the limitation issues, right? It is not, it is a revolutionary technology, no doubt. It can lead to a lot of good things, but it is not like one, uh, you know, point solution to everything, all of our needs. It has limitations. So first one is we talked about, you know, I, you know technically it's called hallucinations. Hallucination means saying something that may not exist in reality, right? So LLM output can be inaccurate. Uh, how inaccurate depends on the context, depends on, you know, what question you're asking. Uh, is it about new thing? It's in, it does not have knowledge of underlying reality, right? It is getting its knowledge from internet. We can all know internet, you know, there can be a lot of garbage, uh, things that you do not. So that is the current limitation of chat GPT, right? There can be other language models and that's why people are saying, okay, what do I do to train it only on my good sources of information? Again, what you define good is up to you, but that is the current limitation saying it can be inaccurate. It can say things that it comes with mind. It's like somebody who's with a loose tongue, right? It can do anything. Or as my wife called it, it's a pretend Mr. Know-it-all <laughs> saying I know everything, but of course, you know, uh, it may, may not be correct. So I'll give you an answer to everything, but may not be correct, right? So what people are doing saying, okay, when it is in it or when it's likely to be inaccurate answer, do something else. Either say, I don't know or whatever. So, so they will make uh, LLMs do that. Second is, you know, why we are seeing it has excellent context, right? So it can know from context. I asked the question, by the come, time I come to second, third question, it has still remember the first question, but still has limitations. So, uh, and in technical terms called tokens, right? So, or how many words that it can remember. So right now the limit is about 8,000 tokens beyond it becomes, you know, computation. So that's the chat GPT location. It will improve with time, but that's the limitation saying how much of ongoing conversation context can it retain? So there are still limits. Uh, 8,000 tokens is like 10 pages. So if you could, you know, constrain your, you know, past conversation history in 10 pages, it is still good. It can remember all of that. Right. Uh, there are privacy and safety concerns, right? You can ask it to write, uh, to do other things, uh, to do different things. You can ask it to build a bomb or, you know, whatever other things. So uh, privacy concerns. Uh, and that is real. And it's also sort of uh, an ongoing litigation uh, item. Now, chat, GPT or things like this, they have been trained on data acquired from internet. Now, sometimes legally, sometimes there's a gray line, whether the data they could have used in the, you know, modeling purpose or not, whether data belong to them, et cetera, who was the owner of that data, the law of privacy. So a lot of artists are claiming, for example, saying it has used my work, for example, creates image. You can uh, ask, uh, go, go there uh, to create, saying, create a painting like Picasso or some of the content. So artists are saying, you know, my privacy has been hampered, you know, now anybody can create uh, pictures like me or, or whatever, right? So there are safety, uh, uh, you know, privacy concerns, safety concerns, all of that data it has. Uh, when you ask any question, right, whatever you are saying, it is actually going to open AI. So if you put any personal identifier information, your name, phone number, etc., right, you know, that has gone. So that's a privacy and safety concern. In fact, there have been already some cases where large corporations, uh, they have actually banned chat GPT. Some governments have banned chat GPT because it happened with, I think, Samsung, where some of the engineers put some proprietary code to tune it. And now that code has gone out, right? So there is uh, those uh, privacy and safety concerns. When I'm using chat GPT, right? For example, I use, want to use for healthcare, uh, but I have to give patient private information, right? Now, whether that is allowed by now, what is the privacy concern? All of those things are there. Those things are questions are being sorted out. Right? The other problem is like any other AI, right? The inherent biases can be under, you know, amplified. Uh, if there are biases regarding, let's say, gender-based, uh, you know, races, uh, race-based, uh, nationality-based biases, underrepresented certain sections of society. For example, uh, if you go to, I'll talk about images here. Uh, we can also come back to text. And you ask it to create image of uh, Eiffel Tower, it will create a fantastic image. 
Uh, same thing if you want to say, okay, create image of Qutub Minar or some of the lesser known monuments in India, uh, it may not be able to create such a good image. So certain sections of society may be underrepresented or misrepresented in the training data because that's what the training data, I just picked up what our images were there, right? Uh, it picked up what our language was there. Some of the translation of Indian languages may not be as accurate. Why? Because the training data had biases. And now those biases are there. We have to live with those biases. Right? So there's a lot of work or people saying that this biases need to be corrected, right? especially with regards to, let's say, gender, race, nationality. I mean, there are a lot of images, uh, for example, you might show women in a different light, right? Uh, and now that gets internalized. That's how it is. So if you ask it to make a picture of a woman, it will only, you know, create certain kinds of, uh, you know, doing certain things. If you ask it to create a picture of man, uh, they might be doing certain other things. So those biases uh, are there and you have to be conscious saying this is a bias. And that's why I think this is not reality. This is like any other AI model, right? What you trained on is what you get, right? If you trained it on bias data, it will give you bias. Uh, and especially country like India, right? A lot of this data, you know, may not have been in representative of India. So things if you want to do regarding India, it may not be accurately represented in some of these uh, questions or it may give you a wrong answer. Um, I have seen a lot of times it knows only the key things about India, right? For example, it knows Taj Mahal and this and that. If you ask about letter, lesser known uh, things, it may still give you Taj Mahal as the answer. Because about India, it only knows that. So we have to be very, very careful. We have to also make sure that how do we get representation from everybody in that society, right? Some of the African nations may be even less represented, right? It may only show some of the Africans, etc., as you know, slaves or you know, whatever. So there's a lot of bias that are there and it gets amplified. And then the last one is a copyright issue. It's more of a legal issue saying if, so there are multiple things. One, there's a copyright issue on the training data that has, that these models have used saying whose copyright was it? If it has picked up, you know, music of, you know, entire music of, let's say, uh, Michael Jackson, and now it's producing music similar to that. Uh, who owns the copyright of that music? Or was that right to, first of all, copyright to use that copyright data in training? Now the output that is produced, who owns the copyright of that? Is it the person who gave it the instructions to create this music? Is it the software company which is, you know, created that software? Is it like the chat GPT who, you know, or is the mid journey or who owns the copyright issue? That is yet to be settled. Um, there are a lot of, uh, you know, ways either ways, right? You can say, so, you know, who should own the copyright? So let's say there's a picture that has been created by using AI. Who owns that copyright to that picture? Now, mid journey may say, I own the copyright for that picture. User may say, who gave the prompt, say, I own, right? It's like saying, I take a picture with a camera of somebody, right? Who owns the copyright of that picture? Is it the person whose picture is being taken? Is it the person who took the picture because he took the picture? Or is it the camera owner whose copyright is there, right? So, again, some of those things get to be resolved. My personal guess is it will take one or two years and a lot of government action to sort of figure out some of this. So that's why some of the corporates are a little bit wary of using some of these things because we don't know tomorrow somebody can sue saying, okay, you created music like using my music, you know, this was created using mine. I have a copyright on this or some other things, right? People are kind of uh, uh, saying that. So yet to be resolved, uh, hopefully, you know, it will get resolved in a couple of years, you know, but people are going to start using, you know, uh, so you might have to be cognizant of some of these issues, right? For example, U.S. Dom or patent law says that any creation by non-humans, meaning machines, etc., that is not copyrightable or that is not patentable. So again, there are different interpretations. Some of that interpretation could change tomorrow. Uh, so uh, just these are some of the limitations. Okay, and then you know what I want to do is saying what the future holds, right? As I said. <coughs> This is more about LLMs and we are sort of running out of time. Uh, what will happen with LLMs? And then I've uh, especially talked about jobs, what will happen? So what will happen right now? It's uh, what we're seeing a lot of systems. They are separate systems. There's a text separate. There's an image separate. There's an audio separate system. They will come together. So already GPT-4 can take both text and image as input. Output is still text. But then there will be more things that, you know, the it will merge. Saying you can do text, image, audio, video all together in a similar mode. So that will be the generic pre-trained models where they'll go that way. The second thing is going to happen is 
these generic patent models are good for certain use cases but for most of business use cases uh, they are not enough or they are not uh, the answer what you need is a custom trained on specific purposing i want but i want it trained on this knowledge that i have that is proprietary to me and there is a lot of effort going on saying how can i train an llm myself on my data on my knowledge or my source of knowledge right so for example you will see there are some saying i have trained this model on gita and if you can ask everything about gita or bhagavad gita and it will answer uh, uh, the questions so like that how can i so the next thing that is happening is how can i train an llm on my corpus uh, cheaply and of course more efficient right otherwise see there has been a sea change in the last 6 months till 6 months ago there were llm but it was thought that the uh, cost of training an llm yourself is prohibitive maybe hundreds of millions of dollars but today that thinking has changed it is saying maybe i can train something for even 100 dollars not 100000 dollars or 100 million dollars and the answer is somewhere in between you're still thinking think how fast so lot of work happening in here saying and when it becomes cheap i will start seeing lot of use cases saying okay i train it on my data now it can answer any question about this data and you know now i can use that chatbot on my website so smaller models trained with effective data so there a lot of effort saying instead of training on everything on internet can i train there are models that are trained on only some 5000 8000 10000 questions and they are saying they are doing as well <coughs> combining search with llm so i said this you can combine search from, this is not search this is llm this is generative but if you combine the results of two uh, it can be very very good right? second thing that's going or another thing that is going to get embedded in every system every software if that the back end will understand the intent so for example and you know the first of this system that you going to see is probably you know the copilot by microsoft again i'm not saying you know you should buy microsoft or i you know i'm associate microsoft in any manner but you know uh, and i don't know if i have included audio so basically there are uh, and maybe i'll skip this because there's not enough time you can see how they are saying you can integrate uh, uh, data uh, you know uh, these llms at the back end of every uh, business software that you use including word excel powerpoint so it can create powerpoint from you it can create it can write out word report for you it can analyze excel data for you right maybe just very very quickly i'll and i don't know if the audio is there but are <clears throat> we maybe just top of the hour now i guess couple of minutes this copilot launch is available i think uh, people can go to youtube and search for it yeah so it's coming it's coming you know it's already there there's a i think a pilot with i think they're doing with 500 600 corporates around the world and they're going to launch it commercially uh, in next quarter that's my understanding Okay. Okay, I'm going to st stop it there because uh, we're running out of time. So basically, you know, and this is Microsoft, right? But there's no reason why another company could not do that. You can embed LLM inside, your, and that's why I said it will change the way you interact with software. Because now you can just give certain instructions and wait for it to do everything, and that is going to. increase productivity again again that productivity increase gain will it lead to job loss not necessarily yes it will if you don't do anything right if you say now productivity increase i will do the same thing but the truth is every company will want to do more so you will do more right? the other thing is that you know these are most of the examples that i showed today are proprietary models meaning you nobody owns that today tomorrow if they decide they can make the price double uh, unlikely to happen but that so then there are these people who are doing open source models meaning these are models that are 
open source where you know the weights you can take them you can modify them you can use that uh, in your uh, products and services so in fact uh, if you go to huggingface.com there's a uh, you know there's a list and there's a dashboard of these models saying these models and they have rated them on different things right reasoning challenge how well they do on swag on truthfulness uh zero shot five shot 10 shot you know this 25 shot like this different sort thing do you give some information without giving information how well does it do and these are the scores of these models so you could come here and see and this is a live dashboard yesterday when we were seeing you know this tii falcon 40p was here and you know so these are the models so instead of using chat gpt you could potentially use or companies can use these open source models in their products embed in their products or use chat gpt or some of the other things the possibilities are immense that's what will happen regarding jobs yes it is going to change the way current jobs are right if you are a coder or a computer science and you are learning how to code you might have to change your approach a bit because in future i expect most of the time you will not be writing code from scratch you will be asking llms to write some of the code for you but then you have to do the debugging you need to have the skills to debug the code that is written by machine by somebody else now that is a slightly different skill from saying i want i know how to write great software so somebody else will write the software you know because it's just more efficient to have somebody type out 100 lines for you instead of you typing each of those 100 lines making mistakes in syntax and all of that but then when you run that code and it does not run you need to have enough skills to be able to debug that so the you know the skills that are required for programming will change from saying can i you know think and write uh, original to saying can i understand what somebody else has written and correct that where needed to and or modify that to suit my need slightly different skill so people who are current programmers today they have to start looking at okay how am i good how good am i at debugging can i get this code from here and then i make it work as some of you said the code will not work 100% of the time maybe today it's only good 50 60% of the time maybe 70% of the time depending upon what you are doing tomorrow it will increase but still there will be that last mile between saying having a code versus a working system that you will still need people that you need and that you will need skill people in lot of it's just that some of those numbers may become small and you will need not more lot more people to customize these things for you know because everything now can be customized to a person level whether it is talking about you know trainings content all of those things i mean there are some predictions like the nvidia ceo was there and he said in future lot of the pixels or we are talking about pictures pixels which are rendered which we generated not rendered today what happens is that i have a picture i render it meaning i take that pixels and i show it on a screen and what he is saying predicting in future is that many of those pixels will be generated meaning it will the content will be generated once at all for your life so if you will go in based on your profile they will generate certain content and show it to you and that's it that's the end of that content so if you are in the area of you know saying i have lot of content i would do this you know you better start looking for a different business model because that may not be there content now be can be created on the click and people are saying you can you know create content on the fly you don't even need right to do a lot of things store have a database of content some of it can be created on the fly thank you thank you i think manu manu just uh, is went off camera so uh, so anurag since we have uh, you know we are just there on the time limit and you have already written some of the free courses available here i would just like to thank you and manu for coming here and explaining and i i saw a lot of questions on uh, you know uh, how should we start learning and uh, where should we start learning so i am just sharing my screen this is a future skills uh, prime platform and we are conducting this uh, particular you know uh, this was the uh, first session that we did on chat gpt and i had a discussion with manu when we did i said we should do a very very uh, preliminary session this is for beginners and perhaps uh in the near future we can do something in line with you know how is it going to be uh, how are these llms going to shape up the businesses how do you integrate with an open source using an api and perhaps develop on it and maybe a next session could be 
for people who are a little deep inside it for businesses and uh, uh, if you want to start learning you know uh, about uh, ai and uh, machine learning then maybe you should start here we have just put the barcode we've also put some session details on chat gpt uh, to understand what is chat gpt and uh, you know how where should you start this is just to, to start and uh, uh, since we have already uh, you know over the time and uh, and there are some resources anurag had shared from the father of ai and all of those things so uh, i think you can pursue whatever path you want all of that has been curated so thank you anurag thank you manu any last uh, words of wisdom yeah no i think uh, only i want to add is a exciting time and you know chat gpt is just one of the llms right so just don't think chat gpt is the be all and end all there will be a lot of new thing that will come up and there are alternatives uh, that are there uh, i think and i'm very bullish you know future can only get better this is going to you know make our all lives better thank you i'm also putting future skills prime uh, uh, you know login credit uh, uh, link where you can log in and start your learning journey and uh, this session is available on youtube if you go and google you don't need a recording you will see everything there so thank you anurag and thank you manu for today's session thank you all for joining us thank you anjana thanks a lot for this opportunity and thanks everyone for joining i think we had a thanks anjana bye 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 bye, bye.